We wanted to know more about the aspirations in life of the four participants by asking their hobbies or daily life routines and if they are happy with it. Most answer that since they spend nearly half of their day at work and get only one day off, they barely have the time to do what they want. Instead, they get the sleep they need and go to work again. With a tight schedule and exhausting work, we ask what their dream job is or what do they really want to do if ever they were given a chance. They gave us answers like, kung saan matatanggap o kaya pwede, or kahit ano. The second time we asked, one participant answered, kasi yun naman talaga totoo, bakit pa mangarap kung alam mong hindi pwede? And so did everyone else agreed. Seeing from their aspirations or the desire to move forward and do greater things not only for others but for themselves as well, we saw their approach to this topic as a factor in having a fixed mindset, where people are contented with what they have and barely do something out of their comfort zone. Their way of thinking or their worldviews in life could have been triggered by repression at work, home, and in their environment. In having a fixed mindset, we believe that our abilities are static givens. Given this, the researchers believe that the participants' current state as janitors make them repress their aspirations due to the fact that they see these abilities as limited to those they do in their current jobs. One Tuesday afternoon in Marky Mall, since we knew that it was Kenneth's day off, we decided to give him a visit. Prior to our decision, we knew that he and his other co-workers, Rizalyn and Mark, lived in an area called Maligaya near the mall. Unfortunately, this was the only information we obtained from the previous interviews. Since the place called Maligaya was said to be at a walking distance from the mall, we decided to proceed on foot, encountering many twists and turns along the way. Since Kenneth's exact location was unknown, we had to ask different people around the area if they knew his whereabouts. After several misleading directions and information, we were running short on hope, time, and energy. Up to the point where we resorted to looking for a janitor's uniform hung upon a window or anywhere it could be settled for drying, or more commonly known as the Sampayan. Once again, knocking doors after doors, we thought of calling it a day. Luckily though, a woman asked us how she could be of help. To our surprise, the name Kenneth Dizon was familiar to them. They directed us to keep going down the same road until the second ride. From there, we came across another person who also knew not only about Kenneth but also his father. Coincidentally, his father, a tricycle driver, passed us by. The man we were talking to noticed and made him stop by the road. From there on, Kenneth's father gave us a lift on his tricycle to his son's home, where we were reunited with our beloved participant, Kenneth. Upon arriving at Kenneth's home, he was just surprised to see us there and wasn't really expecting any visitors. He couldn't believe that we went all the way to Maligaya just to find and see him. He invited us inside where we met his wife, Princess, his one-year-old son, Kobe, and his cousins, which happened to be toddlers. It was a compound where there were no lots to separate one house from the other, having only walls as their main division. During our visit, it was Princess's birthday. Luckily, we brought some food from the mall that not only served as a token of appreciation, but also as a gift for his wife. So that's Kobe and the and princess. Yes. Um, ano po yung gagawin niyo mamaya ng gabi? Wala, 
So, pag day off nyo po, halos nagpapahinga kayo sama-sama. Ubi. Ano <laughs> After the brief conversation, with Kenneth's permission, we had a little tour of their home. We were astonished since we were not expecting his home to be as simple and as small as this. Their home was smaller than a typical studio-type room that had barely no light and was really dim. On their bedroom walls were pictures of his son Kobe, and by the bed was a small television. Their kitchen was very simple, having only what was necessary for everyday use. Once we were done with the tour, we took some photos together with the family and parted ways, where Kenneth and Kobe accompanied us to the nearest road. From there, we rode a tricycle on the way back to the mall. When given a vacation, or when they are in their day off, they usually spend the time going back home to spend time with their families. In the case of Kenneth Wan, he shared that he has a family of his own and his family lives in only a short distance from his workplace. This was discovered after Kenneth Wan shared to the researchers about how he did not need to ask for a vacation since he wanted to generate income and he gets to spend time with his family every day after work. As a father, he works for his family while his wife do the household chores and taking care of their child. Filipinos grew up with the lesson, family comes first. Consequentially, this might be the biggest reason why these janitors spend their vacation time to go back to their own families. Their consideration of family as an important part of their lives goes to show that it is a, already a value that they possess. One, two, three. Hello! 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 Marginality is commonly understood as a condition of outsideness, but it is better understood as something internal. The ways poor people are integrated into the wider society defines forms and experiences of marginality. This research on marginalized groups has given us the chance to discover things that we might commonly take for granted each day. In our case, 
we gain the small insight on what goes on in the lives of the marginalized group we have selected, the janitors. Witnessing firsthand not only their lives at work, but also how they are at home as normal people like you and me.